So, you just bought Skate 3, you just now put it in your console, and you boot it up for the first time ever in your life. What do you see? A five minute intro is about how to make a board and giving it to a dude who just falls off the building anyways. But after that, you meet Coach Frank. Welcome to my skate school! And now I will be Coach Frank, because I'm going to tell you how to be really steezy better than Coach Frank. So Coach Frank, see you later. But before I teach you how to be really steezy in Skate 3, I have to correct my wrongs. You see, that whole space beam spiel is incorrect. And this is not the first time I was incorrect about something. The first time was about reflections, because I didn't have the knowledge about reflections or nor how they worked. But in my defense, I didn't think I needed to know that information. My bad. You see, ever since I started making Skate 3 content again, I have now put myself back into school. But this time, I'm the teacher. And as the teacher, I should not be spreading misinformation. What the fuck? My job is to relay correct info to you guys so you guys can understand what this game can do and how it works. And I will admit, my researching ability is very lacking. And I shouldn't be saying these things without consulting someone who is a professional like Helix Snake, which he has told me before. Twice now. So when it came to reflections, I pointed to a 2002 game which did reflections pretty well. And then I look at a 2010 game which looks very poorly, so I just say game dumb, why the fuck? And this thought process isn't really dumb if you come from a non-programmer mind like myself. You would assume that newer equals better, which just isn't the case. But because I'm a non-programmer, I have learned that different games use different ways to resolve their reflection technique. So me comparing Skate 3 to Mario Sunshine was just a bad comparison. I don't know what I'm talking about, so I'll just let YouTube comment section speak for me. Yeah, you can read the rest of this on your own. I left it up and pinned it. And now for the space theme. Everything I said in that segment was just whack. None of it was correct, but at the same time, I was never trying to prove it as fact. I believe that these pops are done from the universe. So that space beam theory, as exciting as it is, is not very true. Additionally, these pops are also not RNG. For a physics-based game, RNG doesn't really influence how this game is played. Meaning that yes, even though these glitches do have a really tight window to perform, there is even a tighter window to get a different result, such as a really high pop or a speed glitch bounce. These pops that these people were getting were just lucky. Unless if Tolly Mark knows something that we don't, I'm not really holding out. No other way to explain it, no console corruption, no space beam, and there is no Queen of England. So going forward when it comes to research, I really have to start dotting my T's and crossing my I's. Why do they look the same? Okay, now it's time to get on that Thrasher cover. What the fuck is that? Since I'm gonna be the new Coach Frank, my skate school just consists of the Skate 3 glitch list. Because of that, there are already some things I've already talked about, but I'll just go over them briefly. One of them were air drop-ins. When you drop into a ledge, it looks like you're getting launched forward. To do so, you just turn into a ledge once you start dropping in. Fair and simple. The other one would be the no hands judo, where you grab the opposite trigger of the judo and do a gesture, then do the judo. The last one is the snowboard glitch, which really only works online. Get your body halfway through the ground on a bridge and let yourself respawn. You're now Sean White. And lastly, vertical grinds. Don't forget about vertical grinds. Now that I've gone over these things, let's continue. For anyone who's actually looked at this glitch list, you would see that there's a difficulty category along with the name of the glitch, meaning that I'm gonna show off these tricks in progressive difficulty order. Starting with difficulty level one. These are the easiest things to do. Anyone can do them. Give them to your dog. They'll just shit on the controller. Starting with hover feet, a glitch that I founded by myself, not to take credit. Hover feet is achieved by pushing your right stick all the way up and then slowly releasing it before you end up going back to a normal stance. It is at that posture before you go into a normal stance that you want to hold, and then just start turning backside. Your feet will go above the board, and there's nothing else to it, it's just a party trick. By now, you should have seen this getting on your board animation before, which is only achieved by walking and getting on your board. But for those who have played in Macho, have probably seen this before. This is only achieved when setting your style to Macho, so be creative when using this to start your clip. When doing a manual, you can do a revert which makes it a fakie manual, However, your character will still be facing forward in the direction that you're going. But to make your character face the other way, which makes it look like they're skating backwards, you simply just add a gesture to it. We all know you can dark slide on ledges and rails, but what about on the ground? To achieve this, you simply find a rail that just dips into the flat ground. You can slide on any flat surface, including water. Now this next one, even though it is really easy, its usefulness is on the one, meaning that it's not so stylish at all, and you just look goofy running around with a board in your hand. To do this, you have to just be skating, get off your board, throw your board, and then call it back. Another variation is just hopping off your board and then calling it back. There's a specific timing which makes it a little bit harder. Next is a double hippie jump, 
where it's like a late hippie jump off a ledge, but your character does a goofy animation which makes it look like he jumps twice. This next trick is called a buffered arm animation, where you high pop a nolly trick, and when you land, you make sure your right stick is all the way up or all the way down. So when you pop another trick, your arms will be high above your head rather than to the side. A little style switch up would be a manual power slide. Many people know you could just do a power slide, but how many of you guys knew that you could power slide while in a manual? Deja vu. Next, I want to talk about late flips. Well, yes, late flips are just a mechanic in the game that they teach you how to do. I want to teach you about the variations of a high pop late flip and a low pop late flip. When doing a high pop, your skater will have its legs bended closer to its body. So when you flick a late flip, the distance between your foot and the board will be smaller than the distance between a late flip when doing a low pop. To put it into a hippie flip terminology, this rail can only be achieved with a low pop late flip. If you do a high pop late flip, the distance between the board and your feet is thinner than the actual rail. You will also get put into a high pop position if you happen to have too much airtime. To counter this, you simply just keep late flipping or you hold a dart catch. You will also get put into a high pop position if you grab your board. Now for the last thing that's on the one difficulty, we've called it a ceiling suction. To achieve this, you have to find a ceiling that is smaller than your skater. Meaning that if you get underneath it, your neck should bend downwards. Once cramped under the ceiling, you can then just ollie and your character will look like it's getting sucked into the ceiling. Now onto level 2 difficulty tricks. Now a small but subtle action you can do while well in a grind is a coffin. But this coffin doesn't really last long because you'll just get out of the animation. But you can land in a 1 foot grind if you were to stop holding the 1 foot right before you hit the rail. Now another grind technique that's on this list is a hippie jump grind. Yeah, you can hippie jump into a grind, but you can't land back on your board, which is why the consistency is at a 2, meaning that there is a possibility that you can land this, I just haven't done it yet. And while yes, this is under difficulty 1, I feel like it's just the same as the coffin grind. Now for something useful, like a 360 reaver. There are two methods to this, one on a slope and one on flat. The slope method is the easier out of the two. To do so, you get into a manual, and revert. The asterisk to this trick is that not all slopes work. But to achieve the same thing on flat, however, you have to do a power slide. You first get into a manual, power slide, and then finish the rotation using a revert. Doing this all together will make it look like a seamless 360 power slide. When it comes to flipping, you can actually delay the flip. You have about a half second before you can actually start flipping once you've popped your trick. However, you can negate that if you were to go for a double or triple flip variation and just pause in the air for as long as you like. Which perfectly transitions into the next trick I'm going to talk about, which is off-axis body flips. When doing a delay flip, depending on what trick you do, when doing a flip, your body will end up rotating a different way than usual. This is your normal cork front flip. This is an off-axis cork front flip. Please remember the differences. This next one is very area specific. There's parts of the world where you can actually jump and get out of your board without having to fall. For example, off the ditch or outside of cube tower. And the most consistent one is down the actual mega park ramp. To do so, just ollie, get off your board, jump, call your board back and start repeating those steps. As far as I know, this glitch only works on a slope and not all slopes end up working. So I guess go around the world and test for yourself. If you're given enough speed and enough stairs, you can then dark slide down some stairs, but you already knew that if you saw my last video. But if you also had enough speed, you can get into a power slide, but in that power slide, you can then perform a boneless. Even though your body is rotated 90 degrees going the direction that you are going, you would assume doing the boneless will lead you to that direction. Instead, you just keep going forward. Or, you just come to a complete stop. This next trick actually has some flair to it. If you hold a nollie and then pop before you go to the quarter pipe, you would end up skidding your nose along the wall of the quarter pipe. The bigger the quarter pipe, the faster you have to go at it. So like this quarter pipe at Carvertron, I can just do with two pushes. But this big one, I'd have to get a speed glitch. The last trick for the level 2 difficulty is a grounded late pop. Just like dark catching on ground, you have to find a rail that goes into the ground. Once on the rail, you have to flick your trick out before you hit the ground, leaving you with a very low pop. And would you believe me if I said I did this on easy? On to level 3 difficulty tricks. So you remember the cork front flips that you can do? If you were to put your stick to up and to the left, you would end up doing a cork front flip. But if you put your stick bottom to the right, you won't do a cork backflip. 
To get a corked backflip, you have to do the motion of a 360 shove it, meaning you would have to put your left stick to 9 o'clock and drag it all the way to 3 o'clock. And some dark catch tricks end up doing that front flip variation style. So remember the no hands judo? Well, you can do that with a cry stare. And I would say this one is a lot easier. First, you have to get yourself into a super dude, and then let go of the trigger that makes you go into a Christ air. So for Goofy, I would let go of LT or L2, and then simply do a gesture. Now for a really wacky one, which involves doing a hand plant on a shallow quarter pipe. In Skate 3, you can't get off your board when you're on a wall. So that's why this trick only works on a shallow quarter pipe because it'll allow you to get off your board. So once going for a hand plant, you end up getting off your board and then your character will do this. These next two involve using Coach Frank. I know I knocked you out of the park, buddy, but here, I, I gotta use you again. To do this trick, you have to find an NPC that just stands still and is planted to the ground, meaning that you can't just knock him over. If you were to pop a trick next to the NPC, you would end up getting extra height. The other trick, if you were to jump and then hit the NPC, then right after go for a judo plant, doing so, both feet will touch the ground, making it a two-foot judo plant. And lastly, for the level 3 difficulty tricks, is the no comply and boneless flips. In Skate 3, the faster you are, the higher you pop when doing a boneless or a no comply. Doing so, you can then just add a flip to it. The slowest you can able to do a flip is a 2 push speed. The fastest you'll be able to go is, I don't have an exact amount, you just can't bomb a hill and go as fast as you want, you'll just die. Now for level 4 difficulty tricks, starting off with multiple body flips. As you may know, no matter what difficulty you're on, or how high the ramp is, you can only do one flip. But to get more than one flip, you have to trick the game to think that you're about to land one flip. So you have to have a setup for the game to think you're about to land the trick, and once you don't land the trick, you still end up falling, which will allow you to keep spinning and rotating. This only works on normal and hardcore, so good luck doing it on easy. Since I showed you guys the no-handed Christ air, many of you guys thought, wait, where's the no-handed no-foot air? Well, that's in level 4 because it's a lot harder to do than the no-handed Christ air. For the Christ air, you simply just super dude Christ air gesture. But this time, you have to switch out the super dude with the Christ air, and then switch it to a no-foot air. But during that animation of switching from a Christ air to a no-foot air, you're supposed to spam a couple gestures. These next few tricks are part of the 540 degree spin category. Why 540? Well, on flat ground, the most you could spin is a 360. But thanks to these tricks, you can squeak in an extra 180 without doing a 180. The first method includes you holding on a mute tuck knee, and yes, that grab exists. As a little bonus, this method can also be used in Skate 1. The most popular version is holding on a BS to mute. This one is a little harder because you just can't throw out a BS to mute and expect a 180. You kind of have to hold the grab for a period amount of time and then do the BS to mute. And now for the most uncommon version is high popping an inward dark catch or a tray dark catch. Once you have popped either of these tricks, you have to press the dark catch button again instead of flicking out. Doing so, your feet will glitch out and will give you an extra 180. All three of these methods only work on a backside spin. Doing it frontside would subtract a 180. Off to the level 5 difficulty, starting with the airwalk slash tailwalk grinds, which is the same thing as a one foot grind, just releasing your grab right before you hit the grind. This also leads to a tailwalk slash airwalk plant. Even though it's labeled as a level 6 difficulty trick, I find it as easy as the grind version of this trick. This trick is one of the few where you have to spawn on your feet. Once you're spawned on your feet, you jump up in the air and then get on your board. But you have to get on your board at the peak of your jump and then pull out your tailwalk slash airwalk. I first showed you guys that you're able to get speed from this trick. Then I showed you guys that you're able to pop from this trick. Now, get ready for... Yeah, that's it. Next is my favorite, the revert flip. The revert flip has a weird Goldilocks zone into where you can actually do them. You can do them on flat or on a slope. To do a revert flip, you have to be in a manual revert and flick any trick that you want of your choice, while either doing a front flip or a back flip. To pull a revert flip off, you have to just be barely moving in order to do it on flat. Doing it just even a one push speed, you can't even do so. But the easiest way to do it is on a slope. However, the slope can't be too shallow or too steep. It has to be just right. I know that was short, but off to level 6 difficulty tricks. Even though this trick has a difficulty with a question mark next to it, it's still useful to know that you can pop off stairs, because stairs is just the enemy to all skaters. Now for a tricky manual, 
a one wheel manual. Basically, you have to have a specific setup to roll off of something in order to get into this one wheel position. Preferably a trash can. Simply roll off of it and then start turning. The hard part is rolling off the trash can in a specific way in order to get this one wheel manual. As you may know, you are able to do a hand point in normal or fakey. But did you know you were able to offset it simply just by reverting on a shallow quarter pipe? Regular quarter pipes, not so much. Now for level 7 difficulty, which it just starts taking off to really hard difficult tricks. Remember those low pop tricks out of a grind that I told you about earlier? Well, if you just hold on to it just a little bit longer, you'll end up getting popped out of the rail and your board will do a little funky movement. Alright cool, now off to level 8. I'll get back to you later. So do you guys ever remember the Nada spin from Tony Hawk? Well you can kinda do that in this game as well. It's just a lot harder to pull off. A way to spice up your hand plants is to add a flip trick to them. Not many people know you can do that, but to do so, you have to be in fakey. Right up to the quarter pipe in a manual or holding your stick all the way up, and then performing a trick right before you do the hand plant. Any trick works fine, just as long as you keep holding RB before you reach the quarter pipe. In addition to flipping a trick when doing a hand plant, you can also add a coffin. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. Dyslexia. Hey, was that good? Yes, that was good, thank you. You can't do this trick in a normal stance, but it's preferably done in fakey. When approaching the quarter pipe, you want to arrive in fakey while holding both triggers down and the hand plant button. And right as you do a hand plant, then you hit X and A, or square and X, depending on which console you're on, and you should do the coffin. The next thing I want to talk about is wall pop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I already covered it before, it's just this, but have you done it facing a wall? To get this, you have to approach the wall very slowly. High pop and ollie, and then nolly pop off the wall. This trick is pretty hard considering that there is a specific point in time where you're supposed to nolly pop off the wall in order to get height. Okay, this next one is under the 8 category, but in my opinion, it's more like a 10. In Skate 1, you can land from any height as long as you grab the board right before you hit the ground. Well, you could do the exact same thing in Skate 3, except the window is much tighter. So tight, in fact, that I have yet to do it. So remember the backwards manual I talked about in the beginning of the video? Well, you could do a backwards manual and backwards skating as well. The thing about this trick is that it's more complicated than it needs to be. It's ranked as a 7 in difficulty, but I have yet to do it because it's just so confusing. I can break down what's supposed to happen in order to skate backwards, but to do it is actually a lot harder than doing what I'm saying. In Skate 3, your character really likes to be in the stance that you've picked in Edit Skater. Since I'm in Goofy, it wants to stay in Goofy. If I do a 180, my character will be in Fakie for a bit, but then it will go to a regular stance. However, the game doesn't really like when I'm in Switch and in Fakie, because it will instantly turn me back into Goofy. So to start this trick off, you have to be in Switch. Next is you pop a trick and spin backside and trick the game to thinking that you are just skating in Goofy and not skating in Fakie. This is the part where I can't explain, even though there's a tutorial made by Blink on how to do this glitch. From what I was told, and basically have tried his methods, his explanation is not the best. So unless someone that can make a better tutorial on how to skate backwards comes out, <coughs> Nick, I won't be explaining anything further, and once that video does come out, there will be a video linked in the description on how to do so. Well, that's all I have to show you. I probably missed a few things here and there, but I'll make sure to cover it in a later video if I do remember. So come back the next time when I talk about props and objects and its multiple functions. Thanks for watching.